The Biden administration held its first White House press briefing just hours after President Joe Biden was sworn in. Press Secretary Jen Psaki promises daily briefings. That's a stark contrast to the Trump administration, which at one point went more than 300 days without one. Saki vowed to be truthful and transparent, set that tone early on, and she joins us now from the White House North Lawn. Jen, good morning to you. Hopefully good this morning, is the first, Tony. Hopefully first of many appearances. We have a lot to get to, but the thing that hangs over all of it is that subject of truthfulness and honesty. Uh, you say we both share the goal of providing accurate information to the American people, but the reality is there's a portion of the public, a meaningful portion, that doesn't believe that, and as Mitch McConnell said, they've been fed lies so how do you begin today to rebuild trust in our institutions? Well, Tony, the best antidote to false information is the truth and honesty and data and transparency. And that is what we will venture to try to deliver on each day, not just in the White House briefing, uh, from the briefing room, uh, but also from this White House. Uh, so we'll see if we can do it, but, the, but that certainly is our objective. And I will say that the president himself is very committed to rebuilding trust. You know, no, like no time probably in modern American history. This is part of all of our objectives here. Part Part of my job as the press secretary, part of the jobs of the policy teams, part of his job, part of the vice president's jobs, because the institutions around the country have been, the trust in them has been so frayed, trust yeah. in media and trust in government. And it's going to take some time, though. It's not going to happen overnight. It is going to take some time. I wish telling the truth were all that we're going to take to rebuild that trust, but we'll leave it there for now. Let's talk about the COVID plan that was announced overnight. We're going to see 10 executive actions today. We hear... Uh, it's been described by some as maddeningly, uh, maddeningly obvious, uh, and at the same time, Joe Biden is saying he's going to manage the hell out of it. What detail can you put on what to expect in rolling out a vaccine and providing enough vaccine for 100 million Americans to get a dose in 100 days? Well, he's set a very ambitious goal, which you touched on, which is 100 million shots in the arms of Americans in the first 100 days. And there are some very clear uh, steps that he's outlined to, to do exactly that, and he'll talk more about it today. One of them is invoking the Defense Production Act, because a big issue here, which may seem obvious to many, is supply. We need more supply of not just the vaccines, oh. but the materials to get them in the arms of Americans to effectively get this done. Uh, and we'll also have Dr. Fauci come to the briefing room today uh, to talk more uh, specifically about it as well. So supply is a big part of this. The Defense Production Act would allow the federal government to, in essence, take over factories and produce what is needed. Are all the ingredients, though, that need to be sourced from around the world available to actually make more of the vaccines to speed them into people's bodies? Well, as you know, there are a number of vaccines that have been approved uh, by the FDA, and we certainly abide by their guidelines here in the United States. Uh, there are more that are under consideration, uh, as you also know. Um, but, you know, one of the, the big challenges that we've seen is the ability to get the vaccines, the, 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 the medicine, uh, the vaccines into the arms of Americans, right? So having the materials needed to get them out to communities, um, uh, and that ha has a range of, of different meanings. But it's, it's really the, the physical manufacturing supplies also that are important, not just the vaccine itself. It's also about getting to communities that don't have access to health care in an easy way, making this accessible, making it easy for people to go get the vaccine and know when they can get it. Um, I'm sure you've had calls from members of your family, as have I, about when they can sign up, when it's their turn, and we need to do a better job of publicly communicating about that Yeah, as well. well, we've got one grandmother in Israel in my family that's got a vaccine and another grandmother here in the United States that has not, and it's definitely right. a stark contrast. Let's talk about the 1.9 trillion dollar COVID relief package. There are Republicans who balked at even a less than one trillion dollar relief package. This is twice as large. Joe Biden knows the Senate. Kamala Harris knows the Senate. What conversations with Republicans have begun to get this thing through? Well, they already began those conversations even before they both took the oaths of office yesterday, and those will continue uh, and, and continue with speed in the days ahead now that they are having their full state, first full day in office today, Tony. But, you know, that the package was not designed to make it big and eye-shocking eye or eye-shocking with the size. It was designed because those are the key components needed to address the crises we're facing. Money for vaccine distributions, uh, allowing Americans to apply for unemployment insurance for a longer period of time, money to reopen schools. What are you exactly going to cut from that bucket? It's all essential and it's all important in the moment we're facing in, uh, in this country. Jen, I want to talk about this moment. Unity is on the table. It was a big part of the inaugural address. But then on day one, just hours after uh, that speech, 17 different executive actions rolled back significant parts of President Trump's legacy. 
How do you how do you square the uh, push for unity with an aggressive push to undo what 75 million Americans wanted to continue to be done? They supported President Trump. Well, I'll say uh, revoking the Muslim ban, a, xen a xenophobic uh, action that was taken by the, primer the prior administration, uh, I think that is helping to unify the country. Uh, in, in indicating to the American public that we are going to put climate change, address the climate crisis that is impacting communities, Democrats, Republicans, blue states, red states, and, uh, helping people be healthy, that's going to help the, uh, unify the public. You know, these are issues he took because he felt that immediate action was warranted that we needed to take immediate steps in order to bring relief to the public. But he's also going to work with Congress. He's already announced a number of packages on immigration, on COVID relief to do exactly that. But these were steps that he felt were so imperative that he needed to take them on day one. And he'll take more today on COVID. Hey, Jen Saki, it's Gail King here. I, I Hi, wondered, Gail. Hi, Michael Beschloss, the presidential historian, tweeted last night, first non-weird press secretary in four years. I'm wondering <laughs> how long you intend to keep that going. Non-weird. Well, that's quite a description. I, I think I can achieve more than that, Gail, I hope, and non-weird. Um, you know, I, we're going to be briefing. I'm going to be doing the briefing uh, Monday through Friday, five days a week. We'll bring some special guests. We're bringing Dr. Fauci today. We want to introduce the uh, diverse faces and voices and the policy experts who are going to be leading all of these efforts across government. So we'll do that on a number of days. Uh, but, you know, my objective is to help rebuild trust with the public. Um, and, and I go into it every day with an understanding that there's going to be healthy debates in there. That's yes. the job of the media. Uh, and my job is to uh, kind of represent the views of the president. But that's what people should expect to yes. see. And that debate's healthy. It's part of yeah. our democracy. Truth and transparency is a good start. Absolutely. We look forward to it. Yeah. First appearance of many, we hope. Jen Psaki, thank you very much. Thank you.